Hello grade twos and threes, here is a science lesson for you today. Before spring break, we had started talking about landforms and on one of our Thursday treks, we had walked around the school to see what kind of landforms were found in our area locally. So we could see mountains, valleys, knolls, those hilly spots, um, river. We walked by the river where we watch the salmon spawn in the fall. So definitely some, some great landforms here in Oliver. But one of the questions I wanted you to think about today and investigate is what causes a river to flow? Because when we were standing on the bridge looking at the river, maybe you noticed it always seemed to be flowing in the same direction. Not to the sides, really. More just in one straight motion. This river that was constantly moving. It never stops. Have you ever wondered to think about that before? Why, why is the water always moving? Where does it come from? Even if it rains, that water collects in streams and rivers and, and where does it go? So we're going to talk about that today. What causes a river to flow? So you'll need some materials, some tape, a blue marker, a Crayola, like washable kind of marker is best, not a permanent marker, a spray bottle. If you don't have a spray bottle, you could just have a cup of water and use your fingers to dip in the water and kind of make it rain. And then you'll need some paper. So two pieces of paper. This could just be from your recycle bin. I'm just using blank paper so you can see what I'm doing more clearly. And that's it. One piece of paper here that I've written my question on to tape my other two pieces of paper too. So here's what we're going to investigate. What causes a river to flow? Well, we know that hopefully some of you remember from when we talked about the salmon, where did the salmon go? Like they don't just stay in Oliver. They're on their journey to the ocean. The eggs are laid in the river and then when the fry hatch they go through their life cycle until they ultimately end up in the ocean where they stay for a couple years before they come back to start their cycle all over again. So we know that the rivers end in the ocean but where does it start? What causes that river to flow? Uh, maybe you're thinking wind. Wind could cause the water to move, sure. But have you ever gone to watch a river when it hasn't been windy outside, when it's been totally calm? The water doesn't stop, it still moves. So, hmm, probably not wind. What about something in the water that's just constantly pushing it? Maybe. But again, if you were to just stand and watch and look at a river, you wouldn't be able to just see one force that's kind of constantly pushing that water through. So here's a little experiment to help you answer that question. What's, what's causing a river to flow? So first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your two pieces of paper and you're going to make a fist with one hand and you're going to, this hand is going to be your crumpler. So you're just going to place the paper on your fist to kind of form it and crumple it around your fist. Okay, and then take your fist out and finish crumpling the paper. Okay, and then I want you to open it up. What we're doing is we're making a model of a mountainous area just like kind of an Oliver. So you can see when you open the paper up, there's a whole bunch of wrinkles and crumples and there's some high spots on the paper and some low spots. That's what you want. What you're gonna do next is tape in two spots here at the end. And I'm just taping mine actually to a table, a placemat, plastic placemat, because it'll be easy to clean up. But I'm just gonna tape it on there we need some space so that if I were to turn this sideways so you could look at it, you can see I haven't taped it totally flat. There are some high spots and some low spots. Okay, so here's my kind of mountainous area. And here's what we're going to do next. Along all the highest spots, kind of those thickest wrinkles, you're going to use your marker and you're just going to color along those high spots. Now the thicker your marker line, the more visible this experiment will be for you. And what you're going to do with your spray bottle is you're going to make it rain. Okay, once I've got a thick enough line here on all those ridges, those high parts. I'm going to go ahead and make it rain. So you're just going to take your spray bottle and five sprays. One, two, three, four, five. Pretending that it's raining and then you're just going to wait. Observe. You're just going to watch for a minute. What do you see? I see some things happening already. 
keep in mind we're trying to figure out why does water flow? Why is it constantly moving? Okay, and then you're going to make it rain again. So just another five sprays. One, two, three, four, five. Hmm. And just observe. What do you notice? And one more time. One, two, three, four, five. So hopefully now you can see the water collected. It moved, it moved down and sort of collected in these common spots. This would be what we call a river. So rivers always start at high places like mountains or a river could start from a hill. Now it might be a stream more or a creek in that area, but little streams and creeks will eventually join into bigger rivers, which join into bigger rivers, which all lead to one place, which is to the ocean. So if you were to get an inner tube and float down a river, eventually you would wind up in an ocean. Now it might take you quite a few days, but all water will lead to the ocean because it's starting from a high place and traveling in the direction of getting to a low place. So what makes a river flow is just that. So knowing the direction that water flows is important for the next part of our science experiment, which we'll do later on this week. One of the things I wanted to talk to you about landforms was how they change over time because landforms don't always stay the same. And there's certain weather components or things about weather that can change landforms. Water being a very powerful force that can actually change the shape of the land. So I wanted to show you this first so that you knew where water comes from before we start talking about how it can change the land. So there's your science experiment for today. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye.